Welcome to Old Guard, New Blood, uh, episode 24, sorry, <laughs> SEO, uh, what's your SEO strategy for 2022? Uh, welcome, thank you very much for coming in. We've got a, a, a great team in here again today. Uh, Andy Rejoice and Lydia have come in to uh, share what they're going to be prioritizing in 2022, um, and uh, hopefully we're going to have a, a, a great chat. Uh, Andy, why don't you introduce yourself and say hello and who you are? You're one of the Old Guard. I am indeed. So I'm Andy Drinkwater. Um, I'm uh, an SEO consultant, just andydrinkwater.com. And predominantly uh, technical SEO, link building, those are the two primary areas that I, uh, I focus on, SEO audits. But into my just into my 22nd year now. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're we're moving on a little bit. Six and it's, just, uh, it, feels, it feels like a sentence now. <laughs> yeah. We were young when we started this. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we were indeed, yeah. We were indeed. So my, my wife has been saying that this is not shouldn't be called Old Guard, New Blood. It should be called uh, Old Farts, New Sparks or Young Sparks. So uh, let's have a chat with the Young Sparks. Um, rejoice. Hi. How are you? Tell us about yourself and, yeah, and, and, and your uh, your background. Hi, um, so I'm Rejoice Jaku, and I am an SEO manager at Incubita. Um, most of my background has kind of been an all-rounder, but, but recently, and I've been mostly focusing on content, everything to do content optimization, strategy, creating content brief, content writing, um, yeah, the fun stuff. Excellent. That's great. And Lydia, hi again. How's how's you in 22? Hello. Um well, I'm Lydia Infante. I am Senior International SEO Manager at BigCommerce, and my background has mostly been on content and uh, digital PR in the sense of SEO and all of that. Um, I was just doing the math when you were talking about how long you've been on in the game, and I think I've been it for eight years now. It feels like too long to be doing the same thing. Just wait till you get to Andy and my level. It's, we're just, I mean, honestly, it's, uh, you know, it carries on going. What do you do? I tried to retire once. It didn't didn't work very well, that. Uh, uh, okay, thanks ever so much for coming on, everyone. Uh, just before we dive into things, uh, the first thing I'm going to ask is, you know, what's the one thing that you're going to be prioritizing on? And then we'll move into some other bits and pieces. Um, but uh, there's going to be, you know, if you're listening on Podcast World, then fine, feel free to listen long. But if you're live on Facebook now or YouTube uh, or, uh, or or um, or anywhere else, or Twitter, um, wherever it may be, uh, then uh, please dive in with any points that you want to make uh, in the chat because we have David, our producer, who's going to be uh, monitoring those. David, is there anything I've missed that I should be talking about? I'd just like to echo your sentiments by saying Happy New Year to everyone and also to ask the listener, the viewer, what is your SEO resolution for the year 2022? Um, if you've got any SEO resolution that you maybe haven't done enough of over the last year that you're going to do this year, share us in the chat and uh, let's involve you in the conversation as well. Brilliant. Okay. And before we go, thanks very much to our sponsors, Majestic. Without them, this wouldn't... Uh wouldn't happen, wouldn't keep happening. We've uh, episode 20, 24, that means I've been doing this for two years now. So uh, it's um, it's uh, started to become a thing, I think. So uh, let's start off with the old guard. Uh, Andy, if there's one thing you're going to be looking at on 2022, um, your resolution, if you like, um, the, the one thing you want to start focusing on, or what's your strategy moving forward that you, you, you think is going to be important for you uh, personally, uh, what, what one thing would you uh, give to people? Uh, it's, it's got to be for me, it's primarily internal links, I can't say a site architecture, um, because with the introduction of Google Mum as well, um, there's going to be some, I reckon there's going to be some very interesting changes um, that also hang around the uh, the more visual aspects of um, topic clusters. So that's that's primarily where I'm going to be sort of heading this year. Um, I've already got some some work lined up for, uh, for clients um, this month. Which is which is sort of taking a taking a turn in direction, not in the fact that they've got no particular um, structure to the site, but creating sort of virtual uh, virtual silos uh, and topic hubs so that you can try and sort of focus um, areas of the site as Google wants to see them. Because as, as you know, Google Google thrives off um, votes. Um, so you, you you talked about visual there, you know, yes. visual aspects of, of of internal linking. What do you what do you mean by visual? Yeah, videos aspects? on page, um, videos, uh, any sort of um, creative 
that's uh, that's sort of like it could even be an animation. It can be it could be anything like that at all. I mean, Google's doing some very interesting stuff around that, and I'm quite looking forward to seeing what the next sort of 12, 18 months, twenty four months brings with that as well. It's it's going yeah. to it's going to be more interesting to uh, to say the least. Excellent. Okay, we'll we'll come back to I think the other ideas and let everyone chat about the other ideas. But I'll I'll, I'll just grab uh, everybody's you know you know one takeaway to start with. Rejoice. What what, what are you going to be focusing on? What's your uh, your main objective? You know, at least in January when you've set those objectives up in your head. Um, I think mostly just looking at like content refresh. So how kind of content is going to change, or maybe how we sort of think about content. Um, and the idea of, you know, evolving content and, you know, refreshing it based on your um, strategy, based on your brand image as well. Um, I think I want to sort of look at how brands can actually focus more on, well, focus less on being original and trying to and focus more on repurposing what they already have and how they can utilize search intent to actually repurpose. I think that's a a great angle to come from when you're repurposing rather than rather than thinking about a brand new idea look at if the intent has changed for a particular keyword and sort of input that into like a content strategy and content repurposing i think you're on mute sorry yeah. sorry it's because it's because my producer told me to put myself on mute that was a big mistake <laughs> producer uh <clears throat> thanks david uh anyway uh yeah we'll come back to that as well i think that's a that's a great one um refreshing and repurposing versus you know generating new stuff uh lydia what's your what's your you know goal yeah so my goal is to try to move away from trying to make websites that are perfect from an seo perspective and um focus more on the business objectives. So I want to create strategies that are agile and lean, um, improving the ROI of content through trans creation and having a very iterative, iterative? I don't know how to pronounce that. Iterative. Mindset. Iterative, thank you. Iterative, um, yeah. And that sounded like a lot of bullshit and buzzwords. So let me just bring it down to what it means. Um, so currently I'm working at BigCommerce, as I mentioned earlier, a senior international SEO manager. That means I have to make sure that we are producing the same level of quality and quantity to an extent across 10, 12, 20 websites at some point. Uh, this means I need to create a very effective, agile trans creation process where measuring the results for the business is key. Does that make more sense than the buzzwords yeah, they use? Initially? It does. And you know, you know what I think is really interesting about those three ideas is that all three of them are not focused on creating more shit. It's about trying to improve the existing stuff that you've got out there, which um, all, all three examples, the, you know, which were you know, internal linking, improve the internal link, uh, repurposing and refreshing content for, for, for the next year, and then focusing on the business objectives and taking the user down the, uh, you know, the right business journey. All of those um, ideas and thoughts are a million miles away from get more backlinks or get more um, uh, um, content out there and just keep on generating more and more and more and more and more stuff. And I think that's that's really good. You know, it's not about getting more links. It's about you know, get it better links uh, or more targeted links. It's not about getting more content. It's about making sure that you're conveying your messaging across properly. Um, so I think I think all of those are really really good. Let, let me just jump back in on, on, on one of those and, and focus on the uh, the refreshing versus repurposing. Um, uh, rejoice, you, you 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 talked about that. Um, you know, are there any kind of things that are important? Now, do you have stuff out there like you know best stuff for twenty twenty one that is going to turn into best stuff for twenty twenty two? Or are you talking about going back and looking at your uh, content hook line and sinker and and, and ref refreshing that from the ground up? Yes, mostly going back to essentially the content you already have. So I think rather than trying to recreate a whole new um, topic or whole new content, sort of look at where your previous content are ranking and look at how it's sort of being positioned compared to your competitors. And then that way you can kind of help you kind of utilize any new intent to, to actually ask yourself, is this content actually answering the question that the users are trying to put forward? And that can sort of help you then repurpose it 
you don't necessarily have to now generate a whole new idea, but maybe repurpose the content with a new angle, maybe, you know, make it more interactive by adding, I don't know, interactive infographics, videos, and all those things. And that way, um, you can kind of build up that you build that um, out a bit more and refresh yeah. what you have. I, I wouldn't say, you know, let's now create a whole content ideation plan. Um, that can be quite daunting for clients as well. But if you kind of present to clients, we can take what you have, look through it and see what keywords are now doing better and repurpose that content for you. That is a better angle to sort of come at it. Lydia, would you say that that fits in quite well with your your approach of uh, of, of improving the business focus? Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So one of the things that I'm doing is I'm auditing the existing content, um, assigning it some unique identifiers, and then bringing it across um, our different locales. So if you've ever heard me speak about international SEO, and I think you have, um, I always speak about being very um, specific to your market and not only translating the content that you have, adapting it to the keywords and so on, but actually transcreating it for intent as well, um, because the maturity of the markets differs massively, um, and less mature markets tend to accumulate a lot of search volume on more generic keywords, and that brings in the very annoying problem of intent ambiguity. So you need to be aware of that, test, explore, um, and do a, a lot of work. But if you already have a main website, like it's my case, the bigcommerce.com website has a lot of amazing content. I just went through it, found the best performing content to start testing out a transcreation <coughs> pro process with it. That's brilliant. I, I'll get on to uh, JD's got a point about uh, zero search, uh, which I think we'll come on to. But but jo and uh, but Doc Sheldon um, said, you know, the three points that you guys have come up with, uh, contention. Uh, you know, while all three points can tangen tangentially affect it, I find it interesting that nobody specific mentioned entity focus as a goal. Although I think that's a little unfair on Andy, particularly who really who said right internal linking is you know I, is talking about topic clusters. So you're talking about topics. Entities, topics, I call a bit of a similar, you know, a synonym, uh, anyway. But you know, are you? Would you say, Andy, that you're you're really focusing on entities when you're talking about topics and internal linking, or is it really all about anchor text for you? No, no, absolutely not. No, I mean, it's. I mean, the anchor text makes a difference, obviously, because I mean, you've got to get enough anchor text into. Um, your supporting content that's supplying the signals to Google in the first place. Um, so you've got to know what it is you're actually you're actually talking about there. But ultimately, it comes down to absolutely it comes down to uh, a really strong focus on entities. I mean, you don't want to um, uh, just go off at a tangent literally and uh, and start linking uh, to all sorts. If you're selling showers, you don't want to be talking about garden sheds and interlinking those two. You want to keep to the, the focus tight. Um, and that's that's predominantly what that's that's all about. I've got a little challenge at the moment. I'm trying to write something about uh, you know link opportunities, and uh, I keep on seeing the missing link as the underlying entity. So uh, you know you can't off in a tangent uh, you can. <laughs> as a uh, as, as, as uh, when you do that. Right. Okay. Let's let's jump onto JD's JD's point if we can again, David. And, and so D D JD said, uh, or Harry or JD said, Happy New Year, everyone. Well, thanks very much for uh, for coming in, JD. I've got one question. What do you guys think on voice SEO? Uh, will be the will will only focus on local SEO or will impact on e-commerce? Okay, I'm not quite sure about the grammar on there. An increasing impact of zero results in Google. So basically, I think I think really, you know, how much is voice search going to increase as something that SEOs start to engage with, uh, and is it something that we are going to get involved in in this in this sort of group of four here or gang of four, or is it something that uh, that you know is a different mindset, and we'll leave it to Nick Wilsden. I seem to remember him talking about voice search quite a lot at conferences eighteen months ago. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to jump in on voice search at all. Yeah, let me let me bring in the popular slash unpopular opinion of let's let it let the concept die. We know that it's happening, but it's not going to be seventy percent of searches anymore. You know what I mean? We had that moment where we all obsessed about search, uh, voice search, and we were like, oh, how do we measure this? Is SEO going to die? Spoiler alert, it's not. Spoiler alert, voice search is also not going to be all that. Um, I feel like, well, I recently bought a TV because it was a Black Friday deal. And it comes with a um, remote control. 
that I can use voice search with. And I, I call it search, but it's not really. You're trying to, the intent that you have, is that you're not trying to find the answer to a question. Um, you're not trying to find a website to get something done. You're trying to use a software that allows voice input to tell it to do something for you, right? So if I Google search on, well, if I voice search on Google Maps, it's because I'm driving and I should not be touching my phone anyway. Um, if I voice search on my TV, it's because I want it to open YouTube. And if I voice search on my Google Home, it's because I want something specific played on Spotify. I'm not really on a search journey. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. I would approach. I would agree with that. I think voice search is sort of um, it's kind of limited in a, in a way, and it doesn't actually tell you anything about. Um, intent as Lydia said because it's based on the environment that you're, you're in so if you're out and about I you know I wonder because I'm you know taking a walk or I'm shopping um, the way I search with my voice would I break down the, the keywords I use would it then be conversational would it not be so it's all dependent on the environment which I don't think is an accurate description or accurate and um, truth to you know where the the searcher is within a within a journey. It, it doesn't tell brands anything. It just tells brands that someone said Apple um, on Siri, and, and that's that really. Yeah. Can anybody imagine doing the shopping on Alexa? God only knows what you'd end up with. Uh, oh my God! Well, I, I just understand my accent half of the time. <laughs> no, I'm very done with voice search. Brilliant. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me because I think I might have frozen. <laughs> Yeah, I was just in for a second there, Dixon, because um, I thought you'd completely v vanished, but you've just frozen on the screen, but we can hear you fine. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, I think I think I'm, I'm going to put the counterpoint then a little bit, if 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 I may, because I think that uh, now I realise what the uh, the what what the original uh, person asked about, because if you want to dive in and start asking, you know, order me a cheeseburger, I think that is something that may well. Um, start becoming a reality on voice search um in the not too distant future so uh i guess i guess i guess the uber eats and the uh and the um and those kind of guys and the deliveroos are going to be uh still all over voice search or those kind of people should be and then it does become a case of well it might be important for local seo um, <clears throat> or do you think i'm over over optimizing my uh, over over optimistic there I, think, I, th I do think that some, that maybe some uh, something further down the line for uh, for local as well, but for big e-commerce, would you would you really use it? I don't know. I mean, if you if you're on delivery, I can only imagine you want a five guys. You end up with a, a sloppy Joe's from somewhere down the road that you really didn't want. And uh, I say if you if you didn't get those sorts of things right, I suppose if it's a if it's a, a, a it's got some sort of structure to it, then. It might work for, uh, for for the likes of those sort of delivery services, but I think I'd be I'd be sort of quite hesitant to use it personally, um, and so especially on the the sort of like the big the big sort of shopping sites uh, from a, a, a large SEO point of view. I think I would give it a try if I could order like reorder something that I already ordered on Deliveroo or Uber Eats, but it would be quite marginal. I'm not sure how much it will take on. Definitely not seventy percent. Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, if that if that technology becomes something that we can uh, we can we can use. I think it'll start growing quite rapidly. So I I, I think that uh, Haraya JD makes it makes a fair fair point, and I think that that uh, us, us as cynics may be cynical now, but I do think that voice uh, comes in. Oh yeah, and uh, Lydia Lydia is or Doc agrees with with Lydia. Uh, see voice more as sort of device, device commands and stuff, and certainly it is at the moment. But there is got to be some potential, and surely the Googles of this world or the Alexas of this world aspire to say, you know, be able to say, you know, can you can you uh, order order a taxi, please? You know, that's not a difficult thing for um, for a voice search to be able to do, uh, and it's also not going to be a difficult thing for uh, us to optimize for, but I suspect that will be paid. I think it will rapidly go into be a paid result uh, and it will uh, it will just be uh, Uber that do a deal with every single taxi uh, taxi firm and it will always be an Uber that, uh, that fulfills the demand, I think, and an Uber Eats or a delivery for food. Yeah. That makes sense. But I think the point that we were trying to make collectively a bit was mm. that at, at what point is that search 
over a command? Like, where is the line that differentiates it? Sure, we are using search. Well, you're, we are using our voice to give commands to different devices, but is it search? And I think we we are sort of saying that it isn't. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'll, I'll leave. Uh, sorry, Rejoice. You want to jump in? Yeah, I was going to just add in terms of the, if you just look at the search process in general, at least with search, that, you know, we are presented with like a, a, a range of results that, you know, the user can actually sift through. Whereas I think with voice search, it kind of, like they just said, it is a device command that it specifically goes to find something that you have asked it to do. So it's not necessarily search because you're not tackling every aspect of you know the consideration stage or the or the awareness stage you're just telling your device find something and you know exactly what that something is so it's not necessarily um a, a true search journey <laughs> so of course uber <laughs> just eat just eat are online or ex jerry just eat so jerry white who used to work at head of seo at just eat had delivery uh ordering reordering reordering by voice okay so reordering so basically you have to have logged in to to, to just eat to do that you know um jerry how successful is that was that uh, four years ago can i ask because i've never ordered uh just eat by 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 voice <laughs> uh, I'll let yeah, him. I'll let him come in. It really existed at all. I well, yeah, I didn't hear about it. So and so, uh, it's um, existing and and using it are two different things. So maybe Lydia, you have a point about uh, how quickly that's going to take on uh, as a uh, as a, a share of search, shall we say? Okay, let's move on. Um, and no doubt, I've just goaded Jerry into uh, coming back with some stats, um, but maybe he's a, a bit far from from just eat now to be able to do that. But let's jump into uh, some some areas of SEO and and, and start with technical strategies. And now I know that um, uh, rejoice, you're you're more of a, a content person, and I think Lydia is is, is ish, you know. But uh, but let's jump in with Andy. And uh, but if anybody wants to jump in with other bits, but Andy, what what technical stuff do you think's uh, uh, not um, you know top of mind for you apart from internal links which I'm is kind of on page well I mean I, I think one of the things that I've always got at the top of my mind is um, page speed and not just page speed I mean you look at the whole sort of core web vitals um, whilst I don't think that we got what Google said we may or may not get um, Last year, when uh, sort of core web vitals was uh, was supposed to make a big difference to where uh, to search uh, to the uh, sorry to the SERPs, um, I do think it's still important, and and these are still important metrics to uh, to keep an eye on. I mean, if your site's going slow, it's going to have an impact somewhere along the line, even if it's not directly, it's going to be indirectly. Uh, so, uh, so core web vitals is something I'm still going to be keeping an eye on. Um, I always. Um, take a look at sort of like the technical capabilities of any website uh, and see how they are for all the best practices. Um, how are they doing um, with regards to the, the individual um, pages themselves? I mean, we, we talk about the internal links and the topic clusters as well. Is that all uh, all satisfied? Um, when you get start digging into it, is the canonical links, are they all right? Do they have any sort of um, issues with them? Um, Guess that the best practice is in place as well. I mean, it's, it isn't just about being as technical as you possibly can be. It's sometimes it's just a case of just get back to basics and just make sure you've got what's needed in there in the first place. So, Rejoice, can I ask you, when you're writing on, uh, you know, you're, you're writing on a multitude of uh, of mediums or med multitude of websites, um, uh, I'm guessing, and, uh, you know, do you find the impact of what you do is affected by when there's a site that's really good for, you know, that's technically um, seems to be working very, very well for SEO. Does every does every word that you publish um, seem to do better as a result of that? Or is that too hard to say? Um, I think sometimes it can be too hard to say, but I do think when a site has a great foundation technically, um, to, to add like more blog posts or to add new landing pages that you have to write content, optimize content for, is a lot easier because what you find is sites that are going through quite a lot of very complex technical fixes or technical changes. Um, you never know if you're if you know that new page or that new content you put out, um, you know, and you've linked something within it, you don't know 
if it's broken because you know the pages are loading properly or it's taking too long. Um, in the past, I have dealt with sort of clients who the blog posts were writing, um, they had was just had such a hard time finding it because the way that the URL structure was, it was so it was so weird. And that made it very difficult for any content writing to do because you can have great content, but if the site is allowing it, is not allowing it to be found or not allowing it to be called properly, then it's really what's the point. Yeah, and and Lydia, you're you're on e-commerce site, so you know it is. Does that uh, whole technical SEO side of things does that become more important on a on a e-commerce site, or uh, is it still trying to trying to get content into into an e-commerce site that's a challenge? I believe technical SEO becomes more important on an e-commerce site. Um, but the way that I try to explain this to my my coworkers and peers, because I've moved from um, agency side to in-house, I moved in December, and that's put me again in a position of having to manage a lot of stakeholders um, and having to, again, have to learn how to explain SEO in a way that doesn't put everybody to sleep. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to divide the um, function of technical SEO in two ways. In one way, we have technical SEO that's directed at search engines um, to enable them to find and read the content. And then we have technical SEO directed at delighting the users and working on the user experience. And on that side, we've got web performance optimization, we've got making URLs readable, uh, we've got Gosh, I don't know, all the core web vital stuff and mm. just making the website not suck on the side of towards search engines. So enabling the website to be read and indexed. We've got all the indexation, crawl budget, yada, 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 which is really important in e-commerce. Um, and I'll be sharing um, e-commerce case study that someone wrote, I can't remember her name, um, tomorrow on my SEO women thread. Um, but yeah, basically... For me, there's two separate functions and they have different roles and they need to be prioritized separately. Excellent. If you uh, if you remember what the case study is and, and you put it put it in the chat or let David know, or maybe try and uh, when we when we publish the uh, this out on uh, uh, blog.majestic.com, which will be you know in the next 24, 48 hours, we'll uh, try and link to it as well if it goes live. Um, yeah, if we can right. if, uh, if Majestic doesn't stop us, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, um, so I wanted to also talk about um, links and and on page. We kind of talked a lot, quite a lot about on page, but we might come back to it but but what about what about links i mean we've you've talked about internal links andy but uh what about a a backlink strategy um how is your approach uh likely to to be or are you one of those people that that doesn't do a huge amount of link building um you know uh, it's it's hard it's getting harder to do link building uh for sure uh but uh you know, is it is it is it something you ha at least have an ear open to? I'll, I'll go with you, Andy, because you've got your mic off. I I do an enormous amount of link building. Uh, it's probably the second largest side of uh, of what I do, and probably upwards of I don't know fifteen hundred links a month across my clients, there or thereabouts. Um, so I'm I'm very much a, an advocate of of link building. I, sh I share it on Twitter regularly. Um, if uh, I've been link building for a specific product for a big e-commerce client, and uh, if we've been sort of targeting that uh, and nothing else, then I'll sort of share the share the growth on the, on some of these as well. Um, and... So you're a big believer of uh, of oh you know, yeah. The, 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 yeah. The, the yeah links make the difference still in spite yeah, of the, uh, absolutely. Do you, do you think do you think that you know the uh, the Google um, the Google sort of mantra of links are not so important is uh, is is hiding it a little bit <laughs> good, the, good links make make an enormous difference uh, there's there's no two ways about it i mean it's uh, when you work well, i mean the the difficulty comes with trying to make something that's scalable um mm. because um you can uh, you can only put um so much content out there that's going that's going to stick that um people are going to want on other websites so so trying to find the the next sort of in um to uh, to get get sort of a, an inroad into into sites is it's always a challenge of course i mean nobody likes outreach and i think if you liked outreach there's something wrong with you um i mean it's 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 time <laughs> it is a pretty horrible task yeah <laughs> oh it is yeah it's 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 a, it's a necessary evil um but having been doing this for long enough now like i said i've, I've got a pretty decent 
um, pretty decent sort of patter down in terms of that. But I mean, I'm not afraid of picking up the phone if I think that there's going to be opportunities um, for um, good links for for a particular a particular clients. I'll pick up the phone now. I'll, I'll talk to somebody. I, I've I did a, a stint in sales for quite a number of years, so I've got no problem talking to people. And if I think there's something that's uh, that's link worthy, um, I'll I'll sell that as a uh, as a, a reason why you'd want to have it mentioned on your website. Obviously, you don't go in there and say, "Can you give me a link?" Um, that that very rarely works. But it is it is something that um, I do a lot of, and I I can I will continue to do so as well. I mean. There's been nothing that's that's sort of changed at all that would would make me think that that links aren't as important now, and won't continue to be as important. And and uh, rejoice, you you. Um, I mean, link building is not your your particularly your 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 what your main focus, but presumably when you write a good piece of content, it attracts attracts links. And do, do you do you you know when people link to your content? Does does that not have a a, 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 a positive feeling? Yeah, ab absolutely, it does. Um, it kind of shows that they see your content as being quite knowledgeable or authoritative, or they're trying to kind of align with it. So I think it really does tell a lot of brands that people are actually interested in not just you know your, your the brand itself, but interested in the things you have to say because it is quite readable, it is quite attractive. So I think link building is a very important aspect of content. Um, and also it could be a reason why um, maybe your content isn't performing well because uh, maybe you have loads of toxic links linking to it and you have to be careful. And that idea of anchor text is so important because sometimes the anchor text is just not relevant. So you, you do want relevant sites, relevant um, you know businesses to be linking back to your content because it shows, again, telling Google, hey, this is trustworthy information. And that way it's kind of helping your, your content kind of do really well. What's your what's your view on link building for 2022, Lydia? Well, as an ex rise at seven, I have uh, very strong <laughs> opinions on link building. Um, I think not everybody that wants links necessarily needs them. So the very first thing that I do is perform a link up versus my competitors to try and understand if links are going to move the needle or not. So the very first thing that I would recommend to anyone who's thinking of building links in 2022 is build a link up analysis. Understand how many links you have, how many links do your competitors have, where are they going within your pages? Um, and then think about link velocity. So how fast are you acquiring them versus your competitors? And lastly, if you're kind of there, I would perform a link intersect. And what that is, is looking at what sites are linking to your competitors that aren't linking to you necessarily, and trying to bridge that gap as well, because that's going to give you a little bit of an edge over them. Rather than an edge, meet them there and see if there's any of the traffic that you're losing might be due to you missing that kind of endorsement from that website. So link up, link velocity analysis, and link intersect. And guys, that uh, just just for the, for the audience, if you haven't tried the Click Hunter um, app on Majestic, uh, it's great. You can put ten web websites in, um, and you can see you you can just with a couple of clicks, you can say, right, I want all of the websites that are linking to. Um, all of uh, up to say four or five or three of the of, of my competitors and not linking to me and then you can sort all of those based on you know the the uh, trust flow or citation flow of those sites as well or, or number of links they've got coming in or whatever it may be so if you haven't tried the click hunter tool that's my ad for majestic for the time because they're sponsoring the show so we're, there we go uh but uh, but do give it a try because it's you know I, I i i went into it the other day and i just realized just how much better it had got um uh compared to you know four or three or four years ago when i when i was uh using it um uh when i was sort of full-time at majestic as well so uh we've uh we've we i want to jump back to to on page um because you know it's it's right up uh rejoices and and, and lydia's uh, uh street but uh, the, you know when you're when we're talking about on page optimization um and you're you you were talking about repurposing content or rewriting content, but what are the things that make a page good for you or the content on a page good for for you? And I'll go with you, Lydia, first. Intent. It's intent. All about intent. Uh, are we going to satisfy the user's intent through text? Is it going to be maybe a, a page that you can listen to? Um, is it going to be video? Is it going to be images? Do they want a template? 
what does the user want, right? There's so many things. And I like talking, for example, about the home vertical, which is very popular in uh, on Pinterest. When you're looking at how to satisfy the home vertical side of things, we're talking about queries such as how to organize a fridge or how to decorate a small apartment. You're going to want to satisfy this, not with a chunk of text, but with an infographic, with a, a template, with visuals. That's a very clear example of something that we cannot satisfy with just text. We're going to have to plan it in advance, build it. Um, and same with everything else. If I'm trying to understand how to hang a very heavy mirror from the wall, I probably need a video rather than just a block of text or a bunch of images. So when it comes to repurposing and reevaluating the content that you have, look at all the performance metrics that you need to look at. Clicks, what keywords are you ranking for? Uh, bounce rate, how, how far do your users scroll down the page? But then mostly think of intent and what you can do that there is not only just infer intent from the type of query that's coming, but look at the content cluster that you have, the, the um, series of keywords that you're looking to rank for with that specific piece of content. And what is Google showing on their SERPs for those keywords? Are they showing images, news, videos, um, knowledge graphs, what's going on on the SERPs? Mm -hmm. Take a look at that yeah. content. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would definitely... Risk. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think, you know, just to sort of take um, or add to Lydia's point is, I think a good content, um, of course, you have to listen to what the user wants in regards to their intent, but also you have to ask yourself, am I delivering this content in the most appropriate way to answer this intent? So to kind of further what Lydia's point is, if you're creating how-to guides, for example, is it appropriate to create how-to guides with all text, no images? Is it appropriate to create um, things like, you know, how to build a wardrobe with just text and there's no video, there's no tutorial, there's nothing, um, you know, you're not thinking about every other type of content or content formats that you can use. I think a lot of brands get too bogged down with only text and text is not the only content format. You can do other things, infographics, and those things can still answer a lot of um, user intent as well as kind of help you with any set features, knowledge graphs and all those things. So just to echo off what Lydia says, it's intent, you know, delivery or, or of content itself. How are you actually answering that question? What formats are you using to answer that question? It's just to just to blend co on page content with uh, with technical just a little bit. I, I had an example just just a couple of days ago where I, I'd had a page, that I, I was refreshing the content. It was already uh, ranking pretty well for a pretty strong phrase. Uh, and uh, and um, all I, you know, but, but it, and it had videos. It was it was made up of uh, principally three videos in there. But I'd uh, at some point tried to speed up the site by not loading up the uh, the, the embeds on 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 uh, uh, on the on YouTube, I think, uh, and and trying to find faster ways to doing that. I then managed to break it. Uh, so then I went back again and uh, and just put up images there, and uh, so that so people could click through to get to the to the videos themselves. And I went back to put the videos in properly, um, and uh, it. I don't know, but it, within 24 hours, it had had a positive impact because it was about something that, that encouraged having videos in, 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 the, in the page. So um, there is a there is a trade off, isn't there, Andy, then between uh, content and, you know, getting getting a content as, as fast as possible and as rich as possible, because making it richer will inevitably slow it down, won't it? Yes, of course. I mean, it's always going to. I mean, there's. Uh there's any number of ways you can uh, you can sort of speed up a page and it's so easy to slow it down just by just by getting something wrong as well um and one of the things that uh, that i've always been a, a bit of an advocate as, as well as is using the likes of um uh hot jar or one of these one of these sort of tools i mean there's the one i like to sort of recommend to people because it's free as yandex metrica um and it's a great way to to have a look at how people are interacting with your pages. Um, if your pages are stalling, if your pages are running slowly, you'll see because you'll have a recording of it. So, I mean, um, if it's uh, if people are getting bored, if you can see them scrolling around, if, if they're struggling to do something because uh, there's an element of it that's trying to load uh, and not doing, you, you're going to lose somebody. 
I say so. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's, there's te very much technical in the, and sort of content go. Um, they do go they do go hand in hand. Absolutely. Of course, uh, putting a hot jar on or clarity. Oh, is it Bing's clarity is uh, is is one that's also free and stuff. Yeah. Of course, that has the potential to slow down your site as well. So uh, again, it's always a little bit of a a, a uh, double thing. And Lydia, you make you make the point that. Uh, uh, it's it's that's that's exactly what you say about SEO. There's two sides to everything. Yeah, exactly. So it brings back to what I said about the two functions of technical SEO. One side, you're trying to get your content to rank higher by doing tweaks and um, improving web performance optimization. But then on the other side, you're trying to delight your users. And part of that is loading the right things on your content. I think what you were mentioning is the perfect example of that trade-off. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Okay, guys, we're already uh, got to got to near the end of the the the, the whole show. Uh, before we uh, ask people, you know, ask you guys, you know, how people can find more about you, uh, David, why don't you jump back in and tell us what what's happening next time round? Sure. Um, well, um, we've actually got a couple of shows that I'd like to tell the listener about. Um, the first is on the 2nd of February, so that's the next one. That's episode 25, and that's on how to use Google Search Console to improve your SEO. Uh, joining us for that one will be Natalie Mott and Olga from SEO Sly. And then a month after that, on the 2nd of March, uh, it's going to be internal linking that we're going to be discussing. Andy's going to be back for that one and drink water. Um, also joining Andy will be Orit Mutznik. Sign up for those at majestic.com slash webinars. Excellent. Guys, uh, thank you very much for coming in. Um, just uh, just uh, to say, uh, the um, the case study that uh, Lydia was looking for, we've, we've tracked it out. It's uh, uh, boostrass.com, uh, which is B -O, o S T R O A S dot com slash case underscore study hyphen uh okay i can't even say that <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> i tell you what it's on it's on uh, is it boost dot com it it's is? in the youtube chat yeah yeah okay we've got it in the youtube chat so find it find us on the youtube channel if you need it in the youtube if you need to find it as a podcast uh guys thank you ever so much for coming on today i uh, really enjoyed it um it's some some great tips ideas thoughts and uh, uh and, and uh, approaches and I, and, I, and I love it so uh, if people want to get hold of you uh how do they how do they do that andy uh twitter i live on twitter um at iq seo or just via my website just andydrinkwater.com excellent uh lydia how how do we find out about you i also live on twitter uh with quite a lot less followers than andy so you can find me at at Lydia Infante M. Um, you can also find me on my website, lydiainfante.com. And if you have okay, my and that's so for, for those that don't have the benefit of a screen, that's uh, Lydia with an I, L I D I A I N F A N T E M. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Rejoice. How would it find you? Yeah. So um, Twitter as well. So Reggie Yates on Twitter and also LinkedIn. Um, active on both of those platforms excellent guys thank you ever so much for coming along thank you to majestic for sponsoring the event as always um we'll see you um next month if we don't see you in cyberspace in between thank you very much and uh, see you next week next month <laughs>